Hotep, I am the Amen Osiris, the one and only undisputed God of law. We are www.deceptionstoppers.com, America's only child support education service. I am not a lawyer. This is not a law firm. I don't advocate that you don't support your human offspring. I simply advocate that you made them in private and you raised them in private. Today, what I'm going to share with you is that the court and the judges, clerk of court, the sheriff, anybody, all right, these are contractors. These are Title IV-D contractors. More importantly, I want to focus on the court. So I'm going to read you a little narrative. In other words, there must always be a contract, all right? An agreement is a contract. Whenever federal Title IV-D funding is being provided to an entity that is providing Title IV-D services. All right, number one, Title IV-D services are offered and sold. All right, they're offered to the public and they are sold for $35 application fee and a $35 annual user fee, all right? So that kills the fact that, oh, well, you have a right to child support. They do not. You don't have to pay a fee for your rights, okay? Um, whenever Title IV-D uh, federal funding is being provided to an entity that is providing Title IV-D services, the contract sets forth the services to be provided, the reporting requirements for receiving funding, which is profit, and must contain a provision, which is the foresight of a chance of an event happening, that the entity receiving 4D funding, 4D profit, will comply with federal laws and requirements as a condition of receipt for receiving the federal profits. All right, so there's a contract in place. All right, um, and there are terms and conditions. Now let's look at the, the terms, of, let's look at the contract. All right, you already know this, but I'm gonna go over it again and I'm gonna show you some, some absolute proof. And what you want to do, you can use this when it comes time for you to go to a 4D hearing. All right, this is how you challenge someone who's stating that they are a judge. All right, 45 CFR 302.34. The state plan shall provide that the state will enter into written contracts under 303.107 terms and conditions with the appropriate courts. Such arrangements shall contain provisions for the providing. Uh, courts and law enforcement agencies with pertinent information needed in locating non-custodial pay rents, establishing uh, paternity, and securing support. To the extent that such information is relevant to the duties to be performed pursuant to the arrangement. Okay, remember, you got duties under that contract. They shall also provide for assistance to the Title IV agency. So under that contract, they are assisting, what, a private corporation in carrying out the program and may relate to any other matters of common concern. 45 CFR 303.107 details the general requirement for such contracts. Now let's look at this. Let's go to 303.107, okay? C, so check this out. Requirements for the contract. The state must ensure that all contracts contain clear description of the specific duties, functions, and responsibility of each party and C. All right, and each party must specify that the parties will comply with Title IV D of the Social Security Act. All right, so the, right here, they're openly admitting, check this out. Title 42 is comprised of many individually enacted federal statutes, such as the Public Health and Welfare uh, and the Social Security Act, that have been editorially compiled and organized into the title, but the title itself has not been enacted. So what that means is they are performing this contract under color of law, okay? Title 42, the Public Health and Welfare Group, was never enacted into positive law, all right? And so when these judges, okay, who have an oath to the Constitution, um, when they sign that contract, they are abandoning their oath, all right? And their, their contract terms is what they're oathing to. Okay, so let's look at something, and this is from, again, Tennessee. I don't mind it because I've been putting this in for, uh, I'm, I'm actually doing a couple cases in Tennessee. Um, and if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Tennessee, definitely holler at me. All right, and this is entitled, Courts Are for D Contractors. Okay, and they are, and here's your proof. All right, section 36-5-106A. All right, the Department of Human Services or any of its what? Title IV D support contractors. Okay, look, contractor, contractor, Title IV D child support contractor, 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 Title IV D contractor, all within their statutes. And this is just 
These are just some of them. All right, that word contractor appears in these statutes well over 100 times. Okay, so these people are contractors, and here is your proof. And again, this is for Tennessee. It doesn't matter where you're at. All right, but I'm just confirming it because it's coming out of Tennessee. Okay, this is section 9, 37-1-104-D1C. All right, listen carefully and read along right here. In any political subdivision or judicial district of the state in which a court by what? Contract is the agency designated to provide child support enforcement services pursuant to Title IV D of the Social Security Act. All right, they're openly admitting right here that they're, they're operating under color of law. Remember, if you're going to sue them, all you got to do is prove one, two, uh, two things. They deprived you of a guaranteed right, and they did it under color of law. Here it is right here. And if a judge with which, with uh, child support jurisdiction in that political subdivision, that's a county, or judicial district agrees, the contracting court shall have jurisdiction. So you have jurisdiction through contract? I don't think so. All right. Jurisdiction of a court based is based off of the Constitution. The court shall be open to every man for injury done him, his lands, goods, person, and reputation, and he shall have remedy uh, uh, by due course of law without sale, denial, or delay. All right, so right here, the court is operating way out of their constitutional creation. And don't forget, why was the government instituted? To be a benefit, security, and protection of our rights. True? Okay. All right, the contracting court shall have jurisdiction in any case uh, in, in such judge's court in which an application being made for child support enforcement assistance in obtaining support under the provision of this part. So number one, if you got to put in an application and you got to ask for a service, that's not exercising a right. Okay. Now let's go to section, just section down here. Upon application being made for child support, upon begging uh, for uh, assistance as provided by law, all right, the law is the Constitution, gentlemen. It is the supreme law of the land. Child support does not have law. It has provisions. All right. The contracting court, there it is again, shall assume jurisdiction. And it is the duty of the clerk of the court, who also is under the contract, to so notify the clerk of any other courts having prior jurisdiction. The contracting court shall then proceed to make and enforce such orders of support. Oh, typo. All right. Uh, as it deems proper within its jurisdiction. It does not have jurisdiction because there's no injured party. Pursuant to the, uh, pursuant to the contract, all right? The contracting court shall not have jurisdiction in any case in which an absent pay rent is in full compliance with the support order of another court, all right? So what you have here, gentlemen, is a way for you to go in Right. And challenge. And I mean, literally challenge the jurisdiction of the court. So if I was in your situation, this is how I would play it. Excuse me, sir. Are you a judge? Yes. And you have an oath of the office to the Constitution? Yes. And your bond. Your insurance policy for that oath is current. <laughs> now they're going to look at you sideways because they don't like when you talk about their bond. All right. And incidentally, all every every public officer who uh, has an oath to the Constitution has a bond attached to it. That bond is for damages in case they fuck up. All right. Uh, and you have and your bond is current. All right. Now, whether they answer you or not, it's fine. It's, you're letting them know, yo, you got to have an, you got to have an oath of office to be a judge and you got to have a bond. OK. And then you're going to ask them, well, sir, this is a title for D hearing. Is that correct? Yes. Then I'm going to. Then the law requires that you recuse yourself, and the judge is going to say, "On what grounds?" Well, accordingly, you are under a 45 CFR 302.34 contract, which falls under 45 CFR 303.107 terms. Okay, and under Section C, it specifies that the parties under that contract will comply with Title 4D of the Act. Okay. Title 4D of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the United States Codes, which houses the Social Security Act, was never enacted into positive law, which means, sir, you are acting under color of law here today. Now, I don't know what scam you are attempting to run. Okay, number one, um, top, Title 4D is a partnership between the federal government and the states. A partnership is a, uh, uh, an association of two or more persons as co-owners of a business for profit. And as the child support website clearly states, 
I, I have no intention of being your customer. So therefore, all right, because you have no injured party, you have no jurisdiction. Number two, you're doing this under a contract, not under the Constitution. And number three, you're in violation of your oath of office. And number four, as a public officer, you are a fiduciary and you're in violation of your fiduciary duty because Title 4D requires the social security number of the victims that it attacks. All right, and I did not give you permission to use that social. And number two, that social security card name and account number was issued to me to obtain benefits from certain U.S. agencies. Title 4D was not intended to benefit individual children and non-custodial pay rents. It was intended to benefit the public treasury. And on top of that, if you are a judge, the public treasury pays your salaries and pensions, and you still have to recuse yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Amin Osiris. We are DeceptionStoppers.com. If you have an issue with child support, stop by the website, schedule yourself one of our uh, one of our many classes, all right, and we will get you up to speed, and we will show you how to challenge these people. It is not going to go away on its own. You're going to have to start filing some actions, and trust me when I tell you, there are a million ways to skin one cat, and trust me, I got three cats. I know how to skin them if I had to, all right? So stop by, join us, get your, uh, your education up. Um, and what you want to do is embrace this technique and utilize it. Now, gentlemen, they're going to disagree with you. Just because I'm giving you these facts and you walk in with them, they're going to lie. They're going to cheat. They're going to steal. Okay? When you go to a Title IV D hearing under that contract, they have one duty, which is to collect money out of your ass. You're going to have to go hard. The more knowledge you have, the easier it is to deal with them. And also, you can let them know, well, sir, just so you're aware, I never gave you permission to change my name to an obligor. Go and watch the video I, I, I labeled, uh, Can You Find Your Name in This Puzzle? All right? There is a million ways to skin a cat. I suggest you get and get your sharp, sharpen your knife and get in here and start skinning these people with these facts. Hotep.